Hey guys, what's going on? I'm going to do a quick video and show you guys what I've been doing and what I've been working with. And this cool project that I, uh, this cool printer I bought, 3D printer I bought back in January. I'm still doing the painting statues assembly and I've still done, I was doing that. Now I haven't done too much of it lately. There's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah guys, this 2020 has been kind of crazy already, huh? Crazy year. But anyway, I transitioned a little bit from the painting assembly and, uh, statues. Printed my own kits basically and printed some other stuff. So I bought a 3D printer. My friend of mine uh, introduced me to this back in, uh, in January. He actually mentioned about a year ago, before January, a year ago from January, and um, said you gotta get 3D printing, you gotta check it out. So I figured I'd check it out, you know, looked into it, and I bought one finally in January. And this is the Ender 3 that I picked up on Amazon, so about 210 bucks or so at the time. Not bad, really good price, and it's a great printer. Made some modifications on it, built this drawer, actually printed this drawer set up here, enclosure in two drawers. There's a panel under here, panel cover for this panel here. I uh, printed out this little V8 blower scoop with the plates actually move and functional. The only thing I didn't like about this, one of the things I didn't like I should say, is the SD card. It was a small mini card about its size right in there, a little green one there. Small. It came with this little adapter, USB port adapter. So the USB would go into the computer, take the card out and put it in the bottom there. Bit of a pain, so I got one of these little adapters. The micro SD card adapter to go with this adapter here. And printed a housing, bought an adapter, printed a housing to put the adapter in with the cable underneath the machine under here. So that took care of that problem. But also printed up an um, extruder knob, extruder knob, a uh, couple of pulleys for the filament to come in and maintain it from going up all, all over the place, kind of guide it better. Um, also, this little toolbox back here was on a power supply. Holds all the wrenches, the scraper, and the pliers in the background. Now they see the handle down there. That's the handle for the pliers. So it's pretty well contained, it's all good. Uh, what else do we plan on? Also, I did change the extruder, but the metal one, the uh, assembly here, it's plastic. I still the old plastic one just in case. To get the Capricorn tubing as suggested by some friends, um, some guys in the forum, my friend also suggested that. One of the first upgrades he did. So, going on with this, I was printing PLA. At times I was having an issue with the prints lifting up on this side. That was the temperature on the bed, but I raised the temperature, still the issue is always on this side in this corner. Sometimes in the back corner, mostly here. To give you a little idea of where this print is located, it's in the basement of my house. This is the only room I had that can actually work do my hobby in. So it was an office, but I made it to a my hobby room slash office. Now it's mostly hobby room. So there's the draft that comes from the door, it's on my left, okay. Um, so I went to a couple of forums and asked uh, some questions, any suggestions of what I could do to prevent that. They asked where it was located, is there a draft coming in, it says well I keep the door open to my left because once it's printing, these printers don't print like two hours and you're done. Sometimes prints go for 24 hours, sometimes longer than that. You know, I've, I've seen guys post that their printer's been going for five days on one project. Depends on how, uh, how good quality you print you want and how big the project is. So. With that said, I put a board here as I suggested to try it out, and sure enough, the prints were coming out better. So I had a little issues because probably the air was getting around it, but the board being up here helped that problem. So that was kind of with the you know direction I was going. Is okay, let me get an enclosure. So that would solve that problem with the draft, right? So I picked up a Creality enclosure, pretty cool, about a hundred bucks or so with uh, from Amazon. Really nice, uh, pretty cool, easy to assemble, piece of cake. Start printing. I was having issues with my nozzle clogging. The only thing I changed was the enclosure. The settings were the same. I just took the printer off the counter, off to my bed workbench, and put it in here. That's all that changed. I never messed with the filament otherwise. Um, the filament needs to be on top. And I also had one on the side. I had a spool I built. This right here. For the filament. Took the bracket that came stock on the unit. Put it on this and put it on the outside so it was sideways. Feed into the extruder. If you have any enclosure, there's no room for that. So I had to go from the, to the outside. And now my filaments on the outside and these two rollers. That bought me bay. My little lower bearings, really cool. Ran it through some um, steel brake line. You can see, let me try to zoom in so you can see that better. See right there? I think it's, I think it's quarter inch brake line. Bent in a 90. The metal, metal bracket underneath is a longer bracket that I downsized. Notched it so it wouldn't hit the side there. It's got some play in it also. In case, you know, the, Look back and forth, it still has that play, so it's not rigid. 
because sometimes the printer kicks back and so on and so on. Those who printing know what I'm talking about. So I did that, got the enclosure. I was having problems with clogging. Basically what's happening was overheating. It's too hot in here. Then I realized there is a spot on top here. It opens up. I'm like, I'm gonna vent it out a little bit, see what happens, maybe cool it off a little bit. This is normally I I I think this is actually what the purpose of this is up here is for the filament. Because the stock units has that bracket I just showed you before. Mounts to here and it sits on top and the filament sits up here. So that's what that opening's for, so the filament sticks out, which kind of takes away from actually protecting it, right? It's open. So I went to the outside here but originally, but I came up with an idea here. Brake line, the bracket, worked out great, so perfect. So I started printing again. Then it's still getting too hot. It wasn't exhausting like it should, so I thought about getting exhaust fans. So I picked up a couple of cooling fans. These are normally for stereo cabinets, but I'm like, you know what, let me give it a shot. Came in a kit with two in it, they were both wired together. Comes with the wiring, an extra adapter to add more fans if you want. Down to here, and there's a switch on the outside so I can turn them on from the outside. The uh, printer and the outlets, all the stuff is hooked up to a uh, power strip in the back of the printer enclosure that I can turn on and off from my phone. So if I'm away at work and I'm watching the print with my camera that I have here that's hooked up to this bracket up here on this uh, flexible holder. If I see it's done printing, I can shut the printer off, I can shut the camera off, whatever I can do, I can do it you know, remotely. So that's pretty cool. <clears throat> so, print out these uh, little panels. I'll show you this. A couple of these housings for the fans. They seem better from the outside. That's the enclosure. So they worked out great. Started, uh, let me run this real quick. They were perfect. Three speeds. And it's quiet, it's not really loud or anything, so it works out great. So, did that. And then, it, the plot thickens. Close this up, it would suck this in a little bit, which means no air is coming in. So what I did was I opened the top up. It's gonna be a little bit of a story as I'll tell you where I'm getting with, the, with this. Open the top up, the air would flow in, it would come out, it'd be a little better, but I wasn't too crazy about leaving the top open, because once again, it's being open and exposed to the elements. I'm gonna try and keep it as closed as I can. So, Ended up with the, an idea recently, cut a hole in the side here, and printed this up in sections. Made another plate like I just showed you. Made some louvers, kind of like a car register. And the car, and the vent, and this handle goes up and down. You can open and close it. Let more air in, or shut the air off, and that'll go into here. On the outside. Hang on, let me pause it. Okay, so it'll be right here. So the handle, I can open it, let more air in, or close it all the way, and kind of regulate it. Most likely, I'd probably have it all the way open, but I want to have a, a way I can just tune it down if I wanted to, if there's too much air going in there, messing with the air, you know what I'm saying? So I did that and printed that up. That's got to be installed still. So with that said, uh, I was printing with PLA for the most part. And with PLA, you don't need any ventilation. It's pretty much smell-free. You don't need to smell anything. So it's, it's safe. But I wanted to transition to ABS because I was trying to print some stuff for my car using PLA being in the car in the sunlight and my PLA started tweaking. It got too hot. So I end up building a venting system. Let me show you that real quick. Okay, I'll try to get this in the picture if I can. I ended up building this vent with a couple of more... Let me go this way. How about that? Use the light from the printer. Made these plates. Got a little scuffed up, but uh, they're functional. With some bezels, the round bezels where the meat's up there. This is what the inside looks like. It's all glued together. I, mean, I was messing around with uh, Tinker, 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 Tinker Cad. It's hard name to say sometimes. Printed these up, designed that, and built this little ventilation setup. I put a magnet right here, and I'll show you why that magnet's there. I also put metal plates on the bottom. You can see the shiny part under that foam on both ends of this. Put magnets in here under this bar, one there. One there is a really strong magnet, it's pretty, pretty powerful magnets. This way, I can hook this up. This plate right here will grab that magnet like that. Just gotta adjust it over these. And the magnets from the inside will pull the, the panel here. The bottom metal plate grabs there, grabs there, and it's solid. So it's there. I put this metal bar here for more support so this doesn't flex back and forth. And I had a plastic insert just to put in there to make it work. And that bracket I supported that bracket from the outside with a couple of screws. Little modifications you have to make. So let me show you where this vent goes to. 
Okay, so with that in place, this is what it looks like. I was trying to find just a Y piece like this, one and a half inch PVC. Couldn't find it, so I ended up with the uh, Y with the extra insert, right? So it's like a four-sided. Capped it off here. This is all glued. This is all glued here up to this point right here. This piece right here that goes up to there, up to this 45, is not glued in. But the rest of this, hang on a second, pause it. Okay, so the rest of this from here, all the way to here, to there, down to there, to there, coming out of the ceiling there, the hole was right there, so I utilized the hole there, um, is all glued together. Now into this outlet here, this tubing right here, this is my closet space, my storage. This tube right here is um, the exhaust for my spray booth, which I had the piping going through there, to there, to the spray booth. So. Um, but I did at the end here, put a 90 going to the vent to the outside. I made, I, I heated up the PVC and crushed in the device. It's kind of look, look like this. This is from a shop vac. But I want to kind of simulate that. So I heated up, smashed it down to, to about that thickness. So the exhaust goes straight out and it feeds through the small vent that's through there. This isn't being the basement, I went through the brick. I had no windows in this room. There's, there's a window with a glass block, but no, no opening in it. So I couldn't exhaust it anywhere. And I was determined to make this work. I also made a diverter here. Another extruder knob. I printed up a round diverter. I actually took pictures of it, but not any right now. But I could open and close this. This is open. This will be closed. So when I close it, the exhaust from the ABS has no way coming in through here into the room. It goes out that way. It's not 100% sealed, but since I crushed that piece going out flat like the shop back tool I just showed you, the shop back uh, adapter, it really doesn't have a chance for it to come in. But just in case, I put this vent here. And if I have to use a spray booth, I just flip that 90 degrees, kind of like the heat uh, ductwork, and it will still fall out there. And when I'm done, I can just take this part. This gets covered up by this. So you won't see that. And then once I disconnect this, this panel will come and cover, cover that up. But I started using the ABS filament hatchbox. And I like it, what's coming out. It's, things are coming out great. The print's coming out awesome. The temperature in here is being maintained. The fans are working great, the exhaust is working great, I smell nothing here whatsoever. There's no uh, fumes, no bad smell. If I stick my head in the closure at the open, I smell it. If I close it, I can feel the exhaust coming off. I take the piece off here, feel the flow, and I actually feel the flow outside. So it works out great. So the reason I made this video is if anybody's out there having issues with um, wanting to do ABS, but they can because they can ventilate it, you don't need a $3,000 ventilation system. I mean, this works out good. If it didn't work, I invested probably hundred bucks in parts, maybe even that, maybe less than that. Between uh, printing, these elbows, and everything else, probably 50, I'd say 60 bucks with all this duct work and everything else. You buy a long stick, you cut it down. I start off with one and a half inch PVC, downsized it to uh, one and a quarter in here, down to one inch, so I can make, you know, to clear the upstairs here above the ceiling tile without doing any major modifications. So, that's that. Um, if you guys have any questions, I hope this uh, helps somebody out. If you're looking to spray, uh, I'm sorry, not spray, um, to print ABS, but you're worried about the fumes, this is an economical way you can do this. I mean, it's, it works. This also comes off if I want to and just exhaust onto here, which I was doing before with the PLA, just to get the heat out of there so it wouldn't warp, it wouldn't clog. Apparently, if it gets too hot, then the nozzle starts clogging. Here's another cool piece I made. It's a fan shroud. Let me take it off real quick, I'll show you. It's a Punisher fan shroud, it's a fan cover. I put a little magnets on the back and that made it the right size for this fan. And it still has plenty of flow, it's got plenty of room and no problem overheating whatsoever. And it's cool because with the camera I showed you earlier, I can watch this from my uh, my phone. You see the skeleton going back and forth, skull head going back and forth. Pretty cool. <laughs> so it's kind of fun part. Um, having fun doing this. I hope this helps somebody out who's having issues with heating, with issues with an enclosure, how to make it work, uh, to modify it. So once you have an enclosure, it's just paper thin, it's you know, cloth material, you can cut it and make it work for yourself. You know, it's, it's a hundred dollar assembly, it's easy to assemble, the tubes come in uh, to come in a small box, easy to assemble, put together, and you're good to go. But I'm glad I went this route. And this was a little tricky figuring out how I was going to vent it out there, but I made it work. It works out really good. So I think I'm going to ABS uh, filament from now on. I may still tinker with PLA, I have, I have like six rolls of PLA, different colors, so I have to use it up. For the most part, I think we'll start using ABS. It's stronger, uh, better resistant for the heat. Because the first pieces I made for my car were PLA and were tweaking the sun. Now with ABS filament, I made a cup holder and a tray 
for inside the car with mag the magnets I need the cup holder so I can ma magnetize it in place, move it if I need to. And uh, it works out great. Direct sunlight, doesn't affect it one bit, so it's perfect. And it's been like 90 plus degrees here in Chicago the past week and a half. And cars outside all the time with these parts in it, so working out great. Alright, so I know this video went a little longer than I expected, like 15 minutes already. But I figured I'd show you guys what I was doing with this. Uh, a couple of couple ideas you can use. So uh, if you have the you know, little ambition, you can make it work. So these things work pretty cool. Turn the fans on if I need to. And it works out awesome. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it helped you out a little bit. If you have any questions, let me know. And um, take care. Thanks.